And as usual, we will give the Fatiha for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family, his companion, and the Muslim at, at large. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ila Qadrat Nabi Mustafa Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ali wa sallam 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 Summa ila roi aba ila mahatina ajud ajud ajina. Oli jamil muslimina wal muslimat, mu'minina wal mu'minat, alakya mu'at. Shaykhun libla nakumul fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alamin. Wa salatu wa salatu wa salatu wa salatu wa salatu wa Sayyidina Muhammadin wa salatu wa salatu wa salatu wa salatu wa salatu wa salatu wa wa salatu wa salatu wa salatu wa salatu wa salatu Last week we have a lecture, uh, those who were chosen and those who go up gradually, okay? So it's, those chosen will be at the summit, right at the summit. Whereas those who are gradual have to climb up from the base camp up to the summit. And there are several things you have, you have to do. I will lecture to you the steps last week. Now, once you uh, reach the summit, there is a garden of tranquility. You, will, you enter into a realm, a kingdom, a world, spiritual world. You are engulfed in it. You enter or you engulf into a world, a spiritual world, which is very tranquil. And you will remain in, the, in that state, in, engulfed by, in this world, a spiritual world. You, are, you remain in that state. If I was there in 1978 until uh, 1990, 12 years. Remain in that, in that uh, state, in that world, spiritual world of tranquility. And to me, that was the best time of my life. I'm totally uh, unknown. Nobody bothers me. <laughs> and I, I'm always with the Lord, with God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can OBE all the time, many times I can go OBE. And I can remember him on and on. Nobody bothers me, nobody know about me. Something I'm crazy, doesn't matter. But that was the world I was in. Very tranquil, very beautiful, very difficult to explain unless you have experienced this. And you are in this world, you, you, you're out of this, this physical world, you are in this world. That's why people will look at you very strange, this guy behave very strange because he's another world. You can see that, uh, that even his sight and everything is different. He's in, in a different world at all. And I hope and pray that you all will reach there. And you remain in that state of uh, situations until Allah gives you a job to be done. Otherwise, you remain there. And it's a beautiful place. Uh, very peaceful, very calm, very relaxed, all the time very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is a garden of tranquility. You can imagine this if an Adam was in the garden of Eden, and there is a garden of, there is also tranquility there. Even they can't see they are both naked, they are not aware. Because of the innocent, the uh, 
the mind is cleansed of all evil and that they are totally in their own world, world of this tranquility. You don't see anything, nonsense, all that, no? Yeah. There. Okay? So, the one point I stressed last week was that when you are in there, Satan cannot attack you anymore. There is a boundary now. They cannot go up into that boundary. There will be, uh, they, are, they are prohibited from going in. And they accepted that. Even now, if you know the seven heaven, they can't enter even the first heaven. Brimstone will be thrown at them. Last time they could enter, and therefore they persuaded the snake, the serpent, and the serpent helped them to enter into the heaven, first heaven, and into the garden of Eden. And there they caused uh, Adam and Eve to lose their innocence. So what I'm trying to tell you, once you are in the Garden of Eden, you are being given Allah imminent, some privilege, special positions. You are totally cleansed, your mind is innocent, you know. <laughs> you can, i give you an example. <clears throat> you may save Maybe you are aged 30 years old. And you've been saving this girl, 25 years old, from drug, alcoholism, gambling. You do your utmost to help her. And a whole life in a mess, and you clean it up, and you put her on a straight way. Now, people would think, hey, this guy, why he, 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 he did all that? He must have feeling for that woman. <laughs> So you are in this world, huh? you are totally clean. Yesterday, I, 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 just now I, I, I pull up uh, my uh, uh, companion, but they can't talk about the, when you, uh, you commit, uh, when you committed sin, there will be black spot in your mind. You are totally clean. So, he did it out of his innocent, uh, he did it because his death is up for Allah. Yeah. And in same, if I, I pray like, those who come forward to teach this knowledge, you are doing it for Allah, not to gain reputation, not, not to gain name, not to make money, not to be famous. Hey, look, Look at me as an example. I uh, willingly I passed the Malay Indonesian version to you all. You know, when some felt that I should go, go on lecturing, no. I've been inspired that there's a time for me to back out, to give to you all all this to handle. I'll go for the English one. I'm never jealous because I'm that. <laughs> I do it for Allah and Allah wants you all to continue. Yes, wait. And please, I hope you all too, when you're doing all this, remember it's for Allah, not for anything else. The mind must be innocent, clean, and you know, very sincere and all that. So, once you are admitted into this garden of tranquility, you get from Allah imminent. What is the imminent? You can see here. Allah sent down his sakina, his tranquility in you, upon his messenger and upon the believers that are you. Okay, messenger have it, the believers that are the uh, people who are uh, uh, doing this for Allah, 100% huh? for Allah. And make the word of piety that is zikrullah. 
binding on them. That means in their mind, Zikrullah is there, binding, tied up in them. And that is a, the imminent that you have. When I was in that garden of tranquility, and even now, the, the remembrance of Allah is always there. We, 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 without much ado, wake up. So that is the privilege. That is the benefit that once you are in the garden of tranquility. And if, that's why Satan say, by your glory, I will certainly mislead, mislead them all. But not your servant who are sincere and purified. Yeah, here. Clean, no more dark, dark spot. <laughs> all cleansed. And I follow the Allah in the mind. Zikrullah. And again, you see that is a surah, uh, Swat uh, 82. Huh? And there's another one, the surah also. Iblis then said to God, because you have put me in the wrong, I will lure mankind on earth and put them in the wrong, except those who are sincere and purified. Okay? So you have to have that. Things here and purify. But once you have entered garden of uh, garden of tranquility, this become uh, automatic, instantaneous. You don't need to do all a lot of worship, all that, because you automatically cleanse by Allah and already at the summit. So you have this imminent that you are always in contact with Allah because your mind, your mind always with Him. I remember you, you remember me. See? The connection is there 24 hours. Because the connection is there because your, your mind is cleansed and that prevents Iblis or Satan from coming in to bother you or to instigate you, or to whisper evil thing in your ears. They can't. There's a full stop there. And there is a benefit, that the, the imminence that you have once you go into the uh, Garden of Tranquility. Remember the Garden of Tranquility, you felt yourself immersed in a spiritual world. Very calm, tranquil, mm -hmm very beautiful, very soothing, and you're happy, happy all the time, you know, happy. Nothing to do but just remember Allah. And by that time you can OBE or not, you know. So that is the time you know you're already in the Garden of Tranquility. I remember I was there for 12 years, 12 years. Before I met Rasulullah 1990 and was asked to teach, then I came down to teach. <clears throat> so that is the imminence, the privilege, the special situation you are given. That your mind is always zikrullah, remembering Allah. And therefore, it's cleansed, Satan cannot do anything with you because the and they admitted those are sincere and purified, they can't attack. Okay? So, your mind is ready to receive divine inspiration, divine guidance, divine knowledge, and so on. Because you have been chosen, or you have gradually uh, climbed up, and you have reached the garden of tranquility. Okay? So that is the Beautiful part of being chosen or of those who have reached the summit. You have the garden of tranquility and your mind is always with Allah, purified, sincere, and all that. And what about their sight? Uh, once you are in the garden of tranquility, even though their eyes are seeing the objects before them and things in the market or town, Usually, I I refer to this 
You look at everything outside, but that do not register in your mind. This is a simple explanation. Whatever outside you see, do not uh, corrupt your mind. It doesn't enter. It, it, it doesn't enter outside. So that's why I say, if you sit at the back door, looking at the front door, don't go down. In front of front door, a lot of dirty things. Never go down. Never got uh, get uh, your, your your feet into the mud in front of the uh, front door. Keep away. You know, and I did one time explain like uh, like the dweller of work uh, coffee cave. They stay inside. It's like that. And what you see happening in front of war, battle, you don't come out. That is a worldly affair. You are with Allah. Okay? So, if you are seeing things outside, even how corrupt, how evil, how dirty the thing outside, it did not register in your mind. And that's why you are clean. That's why Satan cannot attack you. Because these do not register in your mind. Okay? That's why... Even though their eyes are seeing the objects and things in the market or town, however, their inner eyes is always with Allah. Because Allah has given you the imminence, the zikrullah is there all the time. Okay? And the zikrullah cleanses the mind. So whatever you see outside, this uh, <coughs> zikrullah in your mind um, sort of is like a uh, a canvas, <clears throat> a shelter, or, or something that keep away this from uh, affecting your, your mind, the zikula inside you, the imminent that you have. So even though you see everything outside, but your inner eyes only see Allah, zikula. Okay. Sometimes in its majestic splendor, there is a jalan, and that's where you cry, because you cry. The fear, the fear of Allah, greatness, you cry. Sometimes in the, his compassion, Jamal, you feel very soothing, you know? Okay? But, <clears throat> I just now, when I was listening to the uh, seminar, during my uh, companion, uh, Padeka, was uh, bringing them to Zikrullah, and I heard that lady cry, and I too cry. <laughs> I felt what she felt. I cried. Okay, because when I mean, if if you really follow Padeka uh, at uh, lecture where he, where he lifted the veil, you should cry. And the lady saw it cry. So I too cried. I felt you no know, that everywhere you turn. There is the fountain. <clears throat> so that is the jala to feel its greatness. But others do not cry, but they feel very good. They are, they're feeling very good. They didn't cry. That is the jamal, the beauty, the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his compassion. <clears throat> If you ask them when they are at the market or city center, as what they are seeing, they will say, we see nothing. Because the mind is already occupied with only one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> so, sometimes I, I think like, uh, Achong, or even Tuti, our uh, Mark Tuti, they, they, they wanted to understand me. You, you can't. You cannot understand me. Sometimes my doing, which you, 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 you cannot correlate, but I did because that is what I'm supposed to do. It is nothing ill feeling, nothing personal. Is that what I have to do? I do. 
there is no hatred, uh, nothing. I have to do it, I have to do it, you know, and I, I know the reason why I have to do it. But sometimes it's difficult to explain to you all why I have to do it. Maybe some days when we are free, nothing to do, sit down, I may explain you. But there are things that I have to do. <clears throat> you all may not like me because I have to do this kind of thing. Uh, like, for example, I've arranged the seminar for, for Yamas Malaysia to be conducted by Yamas Indonesia. <clears throat> and I got the speakers for each topic because they I've, sh I've been shown these are the people who should speak. And I also been shown who are the next speakers in the next seminar. And the next seminar, inshallah, will be one and a half month after the first seminar. And who are the lecturers? I already got it. It's not nothing personal. <laughs> you know, so if you are not chosen, student, it's not because you are no good. No. Once you have lectured, that's already good. Except, you know, <clears throat> Everybody should be given opportunity. So you cannot be all the time, this five person must be you. No. There are others who are waiting. So we have to, I've seen who are, to take care what to do. So whatever, <clears throat> don't worry. The next round will be your turn again. There's no hard feeling. Okay. But what I see I need to do, I have to do. Sometimes Mark Tutti want to persuade me, but look, if I've seen this is what I have to do, I have to do. No matter what, you tell me I, I can't change. This is the, the thing that I've seen. Okay? Because in my mind, I see nothing but him. And the inspiration, the spiritual side is with me. Yes, they are seen as if seeing the merchandise in the market or city center. But in reality, their inner eyes see them not, but rather the container Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The same thing happened to him. But Allah say, okay, you cannot devoid you, can, you, you should not devoid or discard the worldly things. So Allah gave him three worldly things that he can choose. He can choose. So I think he chose uh, uh, three things. Huh? I think uh, I can remember now. Uh, I think prayer, I think. Uh, 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 Sweet smelling perfume. There's a three things he, he chose to choose. So the same thing, when you have reached that stage, you will get something that Allah will ask you to do. So <clears throat> it happened to me when I was in hospital with a major operation, they removed one kidney. He came to me after I'm okay. What do you want from the world? And I chose one. And I'm happy with it. <laughs> but I've given one, okay? okay? But other than that, you, you know, I don't ask for money for you all, but you want to give or something. I don't ask for name, famous or what. If I to calculate, the followers make more than 10,000. No, I'm not for that. It's Allah works, you know? So you have come to that extent <clears throat> because your inner the mind is cleansed. I fully one occupier, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are connected to him. You don't want any others. That that is why I've been telling you all. It is crazy you 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 enter paradise and you want to play games. You enter paradise, you want beautiful wife. 
or you enter paradise, you want to drink alcohol that did not make you drunk. It's crazy, man. You see, you, you have not entered yet the, 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 the world of tranquility. Now, the world of tranquility may be 0.00001% of paradise. No? Once you enter paradise, the nearness to Allah, you don't want anything else but only Him. You know, 24 hours, you just, that is the best reward you got in paradise. And paradise being very clean and you are cleansed and you can relate to Allah. Everywhere you turn, you can see with your inner eyes His existence. The nearness, because you are so clean and all that, you don't want anything else. Even the bidadari are beautiful, you are not bothered. So women should not be worried, oh, how come my husband got bidadari, I don't have anything. <laughs> right? Don't bother. Once you are in there, nothing doing. Okay? That's why there is no birth in, 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 in paradise. Because you are totally cleansed, right, around there. And that's why you see the, the, the angel, how come they 24 hours, because they could, with their inner eyes, see the existence of Allah everywhere they turn, okay? So, in reality, their inner eyes see them not, but rather the container of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Men, uh, <clears throat> sorry. Men who neither trading nor commerce distract them from God's remembrance. You are not bothered about trading nor commerce. You, know? you are with Allah, the greatest of all. And you see, uh, I don't uh, uh, capitalize the pool of companion uh, I have to market any goods. That's why when we are having lectures in Singapore, I reminded uh, Nasir and Marhama, no, we don't want any advertisement. We don't want. Yeah? People will come want to advertise their goods or what, give us commission or what. I told Marhama, no. So don't use our platform to sell their goods. That do not allow. I think even uh, I've told Tutti also, do not allow. And the Quora, the, the international platform where I've written, I think more than 600, more than 600 uh, answers, they wanted me to charge people who read my writing. I refused. Rasulullah didn't do that. We are not for the money. We are doing it for Allah. Nobody else. Though. So you are not bothered about this commerce or trading. No? You are doing it for Allah. So this does, does not distract them from God's remembrance. They are blind to all except Allah and only Allah they know. Therefore, that's why I say once your mind is cleansed, the outside that you see with your physical eyes will not be registered into your mind because in your mind only one the existence, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it doesn't corrupt your mind okay? so you only you are blind to all except Allah and Allah they know so therefore You have learned also previously, I say, you are just like an infant born. No matter how cruel people to you, you don't, you don't uh, retaliate. You are just an infant born. You totally surrender to Allah. Totally hold to Allah. 
And what people did to you, you don't really retaliate. You will go back to Allah and seek His protection and consolation. And you can see that in job, prophet jobs. You can see that happening to prophet uh, Jacob. You can see later. And prophet uh, Noah, we see later. They don't retaliate. Rasulullah also never retaliate. Okay? Because you are totally with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only you know, only Allah. Only Allah, they know. And because of this, when they see the Jalal, the greatness of Allah, the inner, I mean, from time to time, I've experienced this frequently. The Jalal of Allah is shown to me, and I cry because the awareness you are facing him that shudder you and you cry. Huh? Thou sees their eyes overflow with tears because of their recognition of the truth. They say, Oh Lord, we believe, inscribe us as among the witnesses. Wherever you turn, there is peace containment. Okay? You are blind to anything else except the existence of the Almighty. You see with your inner eyes. And their dedication, these people, they are in, in communication with Allah all the time. I think Padeka had asked me one time, uh, because Shia Abdul Qadir had said, when they, they, are, they, are, they are in Salat, when they enter the market, I think Padeka had asked me, I think I, I had already explained. They either, they, 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 they remember Allah, and as they walk, they can perform the salat, the, the, the non-obligatory. As they walk, they do. They are in communication with Allah all the time. And when they enter a marketplace or town, they will always have with affection and have prayers and supplication for the good of the people therein. But these people, <clears throat> their aura, their blessing, being, uh, being their present in, in that place, that uh, brought about good fortune to the place where they are. Okay? Because they are always in communication and their prayers are always for others too, not only for themselves. That is why you see waste carmine say, I never supplicate, I never do or supplicate Allah for individual, but for the whole world. Okay? <clears throat> your desire the world, your heart desire the world, but there's only Allah. Most exalted. You are victim of your desire but not them because they only desire Allah who created all things unseen. Hence, they have attained the true meaning of life as well as prosperity, whereas you are damned in your worldly desire. That's why uh, Fadeka showed a beautiful pic uh, picture where the mind is full of worldly things, house, car, what not, <laughs> the worldly thing. But these people only have Allah in mind, they don't want anything else because they have entered the garden of tranquility. And because they are so preoccupied with remembering Allah all the time, they may forget to dua, supplicate Allah for their needs. But look what, what, what Allah said in this hadith. Whosoever is preoccupied in remembering Zikrullah and does not have time to do up for themselves, I will, notwithstanding that, punish him his need. Allah. Okay? And Alhamdulillah, to date, all my needs 
are met with from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the expenses of the hospital were not all met. And even when I recruiting people who took care of me, took, took care of me, all were, were there. <clears throat> and the love that you all give to me, the care, the LC, right? Uh, tender, loving care. And the doa helped me up. And I'm still surviving. Alhamdulillah. So, so you are busy always remembering you don't got no time to, to ask for yourself what you want. Allah make sure everything enough for you. Trust this. You have to have trust it. But if you are in the garden of tranquility, no problem, inshallah. And their heart. Okay, their heart. The heart is a house in which there is no room for two. Hence, the house is to be occupied by Allah. Their mind is always with Allah. It's like a person who falls in love. 24 hours remember the girlfriend. How the girlfriend smiling. What the girlfriend talked to him. The joke for 24 hours. Like that. You will remember him. Continue to remember him. Because your heart, your mind is occupied while by one remembrance of Allah. And you leave everything outside your door. That means you don't allow those outside enter your solitude, uh, your soli solitary home huh? or solitude alone. Huh? You are in that solitary room with him. Uh, she say the room for Halwat. <laughs> it's the stuff that were Halwat. It's you with him. You don't allow anything else to enter. Uh, but they can't mention yesterday, if they enter, you whack with the Tawhid sword. Huh? Whack. Now, if you are in the garden of tranquility, you don't need to do that. They just cannot enter. <laughs> right? But if you are gradual, you have to whack. Not, don't let them come in. Your heart must be filled with Allah. Nothing else exists but Allah in your heart. You are cleansed from all except Allah. These words are will be very meaningful when you reach that state. You know I'm telling you the truth. So you feel it. You will feel it. Only remembrance of Allah, Zikrullah, entrenched in your heart. That is the imminence we got. Then you will be a true servant of Allah and not to any man. That's why you don't want anything. You're doing it for Allah. Okay. Let's say, uh, you see Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He married other women, not because of sexual desire. Somehow he married a too old, but because he wants to, he wanted to assist them economically, financially, morally, religiously, not for sexual thing because some of them are old. Oh. <clears throat> that is the way, you know. But people cannot understand. They say, hey, if he's a prophet, why need to marry so many? Is he sexually deviant? No. Because you don't understand a person who has reached that stage, the mind is cleansed. They don't see all that. They do it for the good of those people, for the sake of Allah. So then you'll be a true servant of Allah and not to any man. You do, do, you do it not for the desire. Desire like other men. Just for Allah. And to their view or command or to anything else, you don't. You are holis, uh, holistic. Clean. There remain no place and room in your heart except your Lord. And you became, become the gatekeeper of your heart. And you are given the sort of monetism and greatness and power. Whatever you see approaching the gate of your heart from the atmosphere of your mind, you will remove its head from your shoulder. This is for those who gradually going uh, 
uh, to the, the world of tranquility. But those who are inside, you don't need this. This is what uh, Padeka was referring yesterday. This for the gradual. So before you reach that, you make sure the enter before you enter the garden of tranquility. Make sure your solitary confinement is not attacked by them, by with uh, guard them with the sort of monetism and greatness and power. But once you are in the garden of tranquility, Rasulullah say, my eyes slept, but not my heart. Okay, all the time, your heart is with Allah. The heart of Allah. And they annihilate themselves. Now this one, you all, you know, I, I remember uh, our, our companion, uh, Madam Lulu, Luli, Luli, yeah, Luli. She said, everywhere I go, in my mind will tell me I'm an Indonesian. I'm an Indonesian. No matter I'm in France, Sweden, Switzerland, the mind will tell you I'm an Indonesian. I think Padeka touched on this point. It's not that you annihilate yourself, but your mind it annihilate everything else except the remembrance of Allah. Your mind tells you you don't exist. Your mind tells you you don't exist. And that is why I, I want you to, to, to understand this one. I'm, I'm, I'm using this, uh, this uh, surah. And not you kill them, but Allah kill them. And not you true when you true, but Allah true. <clears throat> and not you, Muhammad. And forget about Muhammad. And not you, and not you. creation. Kill, but Allah, the Creator, kill. So, if you understand this, <clears throat> Muhammad was the one who killed, but Allah said he killed. Muhammad did not exist. That exists with your uh, uh, marifat eyes. You see the container doing it. The container is part of Allah and he is doing it. No. So, if you are aware of this, your mind tell you, hey, hey, Muhammad didn't exist. <laughs> Every time you, your mind tell you, hey, Muhammad didn't exist, then you know Muhammad is the creation and you also the creation. You also don't exist. So this, this verse is very strong. Tell yourself, if Muhammad don't exist, I also don't exist. He exists. And all the time you tell that, then you have destroyed your naf nafi is part of you have you have destroyed your existence. Always remember it. You know, Muhammad did not exist. So Muhammad, did, I also don't exist. And if you become aware of this, inshallah, something may come out. You know, I, I dare not say it because it's up to Allah. Like you see, uh, when Allah say kun, to him to whom? Only he exists, same here. There's a door, no? But I don't know what I come out from the door. Okay? Muhammad don't exist. You don't exist. Muhammad is you. You don't exist. Then who exists? Um, the container. Now, every time you walk with this in mind, then it's not you walking. <laughs> And what come from this? The realization, what door is open? I'm not sure. Okay, we all can try, and hopefully something, some door can open. <laughs> so he's the magnifest, and he's the hidden. You don't exist. You annihilate yourself. You know, whatever you see, these are the manifestation of the container. The wajibul wujud and the mungkin wujud. The sifat, mungkin wujud. The zat is the wajibul wujud. It's a combined mungkin and wajibul. Creation. Huh? Creation. So, <clears throat> you know these creations come from the continent. So, it's the magnifest and he's the hidden. You see this, 
You know, you don't exist. The hidden also is from the continent. Okay? And therefore, as Imam Ghazali say, one who knows himself and knows his God will surely know that he does not exist. So if you do not exist, then who is walking? <laughs> who is thinking? Who is acting? All that. And this is so powerful in that any dirt, dirt, uh, dirty things thrown at Allah doesn't doesn't hold water. Because why? Only one existence. Okay? You don't see the bench, you don't see the desk, you see only trees. One existence. And this where <clears throat> when you talk about Allah's Afal, his conduct, you cannot uh, wrong his conduct because you realize Muhammad did not exist. <laughs> exists only him. And that is where many of accusations by the Western people of Allah, Purati and so on, they do not hold water because they are only one existence. So they cruel to whom? Okay. So, Shia Abdul Qadir say, in short, they annihilate themselves and only seeing the omnipresence of Allah. Thus, they are called Abdal changes. Okay. Well, that, that's I say, people cannot understand you. So you're different. You're harmless, polite, always smiling, you know, harmless. They look at you. You know? You are Abdal, you are changed. That's why my 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 uh, my colleagues in the place I studied said, hey, you change 360 degrees. 360 degrees. <laughs> it changes. Where well, you are in that world. Okay. <clears throat> Allah, the ever living, the self subsisting, who sustained the entire, the entire order of the universe. Every day he exercised power. You know? So when you see people walking, that once you understood this, you see Allah exercising his power. You, you, you see people uh, working, Allah exercising his power. You see the Bird fly, Allah is rising to power, and so on. But your mind is clean. You only see only one existence. You don't see the sifat, the mungkin wujud. You don't see the essence, the wajibul wujud. You only see the container wherever you turn. So you know everything that moves is him sustaining them, the bird flying, the fish in the river, the animal in the forest, human being, building, airplane, train. These are all sustained by him in this world and even in the universe or even uh, the seen, the, the unseen. He's the one sustaining because there's only one existence that's him. And that's why Jesus said, Allah exists and without him nothing exists. Okay? So he's the only existence. Okay? <clears throat> so that is the point of his their annihilation. And therefore, I've been stressing very much that you have to annihilate yourself. You have to. Otherwise, if you still exist, you still have desire, you still have wants, then you are not yet reached that stage. You have to 
any elite yourself. Muhammad did not exist. That exists the container. Okay? Hmm. The, their faith. As for true believers, it is they in whose heart he has inscribed faith. Like these are the people who have been chosen or those who have gradually reached the garden of tranquility. The heart is, has been inscribed with faith and whom he has strengthened with inspiration from himself. So he will get inspiration. And whom in time he will admit into garden through which water, that will be paradise later on. But once you reach the garden of tranquility, your heart is inscribed with faith and you are strengthened with inspiration. And that is why they say the Arif Billah is the, the knowledge of God is with him. And every time he's inspired with all knowledge that is sometimes very intriguing and, and, and not easily people can understand. All the secrecy, divine secrecy open to him because his mind is cleansed. So the inspiration come very uh, clearly to him. So we see also Moses asks, oh, among the dwellers of paradise, who is the most lovely of those who have chosen okay, by my hand and have implanted dignity in them. And I'm waiting for them. I've thought that which are, that is a paradise. But the point is, I've chosen. So if you gradually reach the summit, then you are chosen also. But you are chosen through grad gradual process. Okay? And Allah will Im Im implant dignity in you. Okay? <clears throat> now, <clears throat> you see, your faith, once you are there, now I want to, you to listen carefully here. Everything that happened before your eyes, at the front door, everything that happened. Now the issue of LGBT. Now the issue of this, that, a lot of things coming out. And people are not happy with LGBT. Yo. People are not happy with burning of the Quran. People are not happy with that, not happy with this. Yo. What is our position? How is it different? And you, you, you must remember this, hold on to this that I'm going to tell you. First thing, Allah is wise. So everything that's going to happen or happening, He must know is all wise. Allah is all knowing, all wise. He knows. So before the LGBT come into issue, He knows. Okay? Before this uh, issue of uh, uh, to Makadis, there was a, a lot of anger. He knows. He let it happen. If he doesn't let it happen, it cannot be. First, he knows. He's all wise, all knowing. And then, but they cannot do so unless Allah wills. That means he will it. Allowed it. He knows he allowed it. Okay. You cannot will unless God wills. You cannot do anything. So Allah knows. Allah allowed that to happen. Okay. And this has been written in the law of Mahfuz. Nothing have we omitted from the book and not an atom weight in the earth or in the sky escape your Lord. Doesn't escape him. Everything he knows and it's written in the book, the law of Mahfu. Okay? And everything that happened, everything that he knows, he allowed it to happen, it's already written in the book. Okay? But uh, uh, when the time comes, it happened. All that, there is purpose. Did you imagine that we created you without any purpose? So everything that happened, there is a purpose. 
It was for a true purpose and a specific term that we created heaven and earth and everything in between. So you must believe it's wise. Everything that happened, he allows it for his will. Or they written in the law of Mahfuz, nothing is omitted. And there is a purpose for everything. Okay. And so it says all things we have kept in a clear book. Know what is less than that or greater than that is written in a clear book. So everything is there. You cannot escape. And this is called predestination. Already predestined. Okay. And therefore, if anything happened, we have to say, inshallah. And never say about anything, behold, I shall do this tomorrow without adding, inshallah, I've got will. So everything happened because he wills it. And again, I repeat again, everything happened to you. Maybe you, you have uh, misfortune. Maybe you have uh, experienced some sad thing some grief, some bad thing, all that. Remember, this is what I tell you. Well, how painful it is. First, Allah is wise. He knows what happened to you. Number two, He allowed that thing to happen to you. Otherwise, it won't happen. Okay, number two. Number three, is already written, predestined, as in the book. Okay, it's in the book all the time. But all this is for a good purpose because he's the most wise. All this happened to you for a good purpose because if he did something which is not good, he cannot be Allah. So everything that happened to you, although you see it's bad, like medicine is bitter, but when you drink, you cure for your sickness. That's the way it is. So he's wise, he knows what happened to you. You lost a child, you are so grieved, but remember, he knows and he allowed that to happen. Already written, nothing is amiss, okay? And it's always in the book, it's already written in the book, Lord Marcos. And there's always a good reason for it. Always there's a good reason for it, okay? It's not for, for bad thing, no. It's always there's a good reason because he's most wise. If he did something which no good, he cannot be Quran. Allah. No? It's always the good of you. Okay? And let me ask you, who else you want to hold to, to dictate your life or to guide you in your life? Who else? Who can be better than Allah? Okay? And Allah is the best of planners. They plan and God plan, but God is the best of plan. You hold to him. He's, nobody can beat him. Nobody can outsmart him. He's the best planner. So, do you going to put your life in a human being? Hands? Or you want to put your life in Allah's hand? Who is the better planner? Him. So he's wise, he knew what's going to happen, he allowed it. He's already written the book, you know, and uh, it's the best for you because he's the best planner. Okay? And you can't change that, become predestined. My plan is firm, and Allah's command must be fulfilled. So that predestination you can see here. Yeah? You can't change that. Rasulullah say you must believe in Allah, angels, his book, his prophet, Kiyama, and predestination, takdir. And Rasulullah say, who says that he can change takdir? You think that way, that your place surely in hell. You can't. But please remember, there's always the good purpose it happened to you. Even death, is a good purpose happen to you. Okay. I think inshallah next week I'll touch on death again. Then uh, the situation of the death next week. So you can learn more to understand the situation in this world. Next week inshallah if that is the the topic I need to speak because it came down already. Inshallah, next year.
So that is the uh, yeah, okay, and then their are graphs. Who they hold to, okay, and this Allah say, whoever submit his whole self to Allah and doer of good, as graphs indeed the most trustworthy and whole, and with Allah rest the end and decision of all affairs. So. Even something bad happened to you, remember, he knows it, he allowed it, it's written in the book, and it's always good purpose for you, it's always the best for you, because he's the greater planner, the most wise. So who you want to hold your, 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 your life to, other people or Allah? So you, you want to trust who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever you happen to you, you say, Inna lillahi wa inna irajuun. Oh, you say, inshallah, God will. Or from him and to him we come back. Yes, he can do whatever he likes. He wants hold on to this. There's no two others way. I've gone through tough life uh, when I was still in this. Garden of Tranquility. No, the, the test was quite strong. But I'm okay. I hang on to it. And always tell people, even the typhoon hit you, hold on to Allah. Okay? Hold on to it. Don't let go. Okay? So that is the thing. Remember, if anything think bad happened to you, remember, Allah is most wise. He knows. Number two, He allows it. Okay. Number three, so they return. Number four, there's always a good reason. Number five, you must hold on to him because he's the best plan. No use to put your life on people's hand, in people's hand, but put to Allah. And he says that, you know, whoever submit his whole self to Allah and do of good as grubs, indeed the most trustworthy and holy. Is it? When I receive this knowledge, I'm supposed to go to London to continue my education. And I got no money. My family too got no money. Even my sister say, you don't dream. Nobody can help you to go London. And I quietly just submit myself to Allah, but it's the best. And yet, I'm able to, because my friends, Malaysian friends, pull resources and send me. So, if you hold on to him, Allah say, Allah give you a way out from your predicament and even enrich you if you are taqwa to it, hold on to it. We call it the du'a of 1,000 dinar. So whatever happened, hold on to him. You hold on to me also, I'm a human being. Hold on to him. That's why when I was in hospital, my uh, the, the latest one, I may lose a, a leg because if the uh, wound, the, the pus inside my leg uh, had reached the knee, they have to cut it. So my wife was crying, thinking I may lose a leg. I said, you don't cry. This is the best for me. If Allah wants it that I should leave his one leg, so be it. That's the best for me. If Allah want me to live with two legs, that also the best for me because you trust him. Okay? So you, you must hang on to this. No matter what, that's the best for you. He's the greatest planner. Nobody can outsmart him. He's the greatest planner. Hold on to him. Submit yourself to him. That is a trustworthy at all. 
Right? And Shia Abdul Qadir say, hold on to him day and night and hold fast to Allah. He is your protector, the best to protect and the best help. Hold on to him. Allah forbid, but if most misfortune befall you, you bankrupted, all your money gone, your asset gone, and all your life is like Ayub, no? Prophet Ayub. Your life becomes zero. No asset, nothing, homeless. Hang on to Allah. I had gone through that, and I, I had to sleep in a mosque and depend on charity of others to give us food to survive by fast. Every Margaret, they were sad. And the Noja even whack you, ask you to line up uh, to get food, you know. And you just keep and hang on to Allah. He's the best protector. Okay? And you will be like I, I mentioned, like the husk of coconut. You will never sink. You will push inside the water. Okay? So, hold on to him. Surely my prayer, my worship, my life and my death are for you, Allah. 100%. You must hold on. And here what say, she Abdul Qadir say, begin with piety and with submission to Allah. Surrender to his will and total reliance on him. Like a baby born again. And therefore, Rasulullah was asked, I, Muhammad, am commanded to be the first of those who surrender. Okay, hold on to Allah. Surrender yourself to Him. Okay. So, Rasulullah said, uh, Allah said to Rasulullah, if they dispute you with thee, say, I have submitted my whole self to Allah, so have those who follow me. So remember, whatever misfortune fell on you, whatever bad thing happened to you. Hang on to Allah. You hang on to me. I may not be able to do anything just to supplicate Allah to help you. But hang on to Allah. Even if that means you have to die, so be it. That is the best for you. Hang on to Allah. And what is the best for you? And that will happen. Because it's most wise. He knows everything, you know. So hang on to him, it's the best planner. Hang on to him. Remember I mentioned again, whatever thing happened to you bad, or, <coughs> or misfortune, hang on to Allah. Hang on to him. Okay? Inshallah, he bring you up. So hang on to him. And you know that it's the best for you. And it won't be forever. It may be temporal. Like, uh, for example, Job, Ayub, Job. He lost everything. Family, husbandry, crops, and so on. And even his house. But then Allah gave back. Same like Jacob, he lost Joseph. Until he was blind, then Allah gave back to them. Because they both hang on to Allah. Even uh, Yunus, jo Jonah, was swallowed by the fish, big fish. But he hang on to Allah, and Allah let him out. No matter what, even tau typhoon hit you, hang on to Allah. Don't let go. Okay? Because Shia Abdul Qadir say, when you're going to die, then to remember him, there's no point. So, uh, Pharaoh, when you're going to be drowned, say, I believe in the Lord of Moses, too late really. Hang on to Allah, no matter what. How, no matter how miserable your life, hang on to Allah. That part of your life is something that there's a good purpose for. There's a true reason for it, you know. And when you look back, it is, uh, you know, it's a lesson to learn. Yeah. <clears throat> so, 
say, bear witness that we, the Muhammad and his companion, Sahaba, have surrendered ourselves to Allah. Say, O oh, believers, Allah guidance is the only guidance and we have been directed to submit to the Lord of the world. Remember, whatever happened to you, even I'm not around, remember my word. Whatever happened to you, the bad thing or what, or even the good thing, always hang on to Allah. And you will never sink to the bottom. Okay, hang on. Always hakul ya, hang on to him. No matter what grief, hang on to him. There's a good purpose for it. And this is submission to his will. This is Islam. This day I perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. That is Islam. When you hang on to him, you submit yourself to him. That is Islam. If anyone desire a religion other than Islam, submission to Allah. Islam. Never will be accepted of any day after he will be in the rank of those who have lost all spiritual good. Eh? Now here, O oh, ye who believe, enter into Islam wholeheartedly. That means surrender, submit yourself to Allah, to his will, 100%. So here you see, Islam is absolute submission to the will of Allah. In the religious sense, the word Islam means submission to the will of God and obedience to his law. Okay? So you see, I give you an example, you know, Jacob. And he was very sad. He lost Joseph. They say he was eaten by wolf. You know, he cried until he blind. But, right, he, and his eyes become white with sorrow. And he fell into silent melancholy. Very sad grief. But yet, he could only complain to Allah. He goes back to Allah. He went back to Allah. He answered, it's only to God that I complain my deep grief and my sorrow. For I know from God something that you do not know. And we know from God that He's the best planner. We know from God that anything happened to you, there's a true purpose, there's a good purpose. So who else you want to hold on? Okay, so hold on to him. When anything happened, like Jacob lost Joseph and they blind, still hang on to Allah. Okay, no matter what, you will never sing. I tell you, you will never sing, inshallah. Okay? So Jacob, in the end, uh, got back uh, uh, what is uh, Joseph. And he got his sight back. As long as you don't give up, he's the best planner. Nobody can outdo him or outsmart him. And everything he does, there's a good purpose for you. Okay? Hang on to him. There's no other person... You don't put your life in people's hands. You put your life in God's hand. He will guide you. He's the best planner. Okay? Similarly, Job, all his crop and animal gone. Members of his family destroyed. The two spouses wanted a divorce. And then he suffered terrible illness. But he didn't let go of our life. Hang on, Job. Hang on. And remember Job, when he cried to his Lord, truly distress has seized me, but thou art the most merciful of those that are mine. So go back to Allah. Hang on to him. So this also will uh, remind me of my uh, companion, Aziz Samsudin. He, he suffered a lot from his sickness, but he hang on to Allah. Okay? You can see the face brighten up. The nose is there. So he hang on. Every time I see him, I'm happy. Okay? Many of you, even Padeka lost close one, and yet he come out happy. I know Rosli from uh, Surabaya goes through the same thing. Uh, uh, Rista. You know? These are people who have gone to uh, Tuti, the whole JB. Mark Tutti, huh? they've gone through 
hard time. Eh? <laughs> but yet come out not shining. It's Allah who light. Many more of you okay, that I have not mentioned. <clears throat> Rihanna too. Gone through a lot. But that yet is still strong until today and have the blessing of Allah. Hang on to him. Amida also. Gone through a lot in her life. Hang on to Allah. Hang on. Hang on. Even I'm not around. Remember, I say, hang on to him. There's no other hand that is trustworthy that is better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will never let you down. Have faith in that. He had promised that. He will give you a way out and even the provision that you need. Hang on to him. So Allah say about after job, Ayub, we found him patient in adversity. So you have to be patient, but yet hold on to him. An excellent servant, he too always turn to God. So after you reach the garden of tranquility, you may have to go through all this, you know, like I've gone through. But hold on to him. Hold on to him. You may lose everything. But if you hold on to him, inshallah, you have a way out. Okay? So see like Noah. They laugh at him. Hey, you crazy one. How can you build a ship on the mountain? How are you going to drag it down to the shore? To the sea? It's very far. They laugh at you while you mad. Every time they pass, they mock at him. But he still hang on to Allah. He believes. There's a good reason why Allah commanded him to build a ship on top of the mountain. You see, all the shipyard is always near the sea, or it's never on the mountain. You see, that? so they want to let go of the ship very easy. But the mountain, high up the mountain. But he trusts Allah. Even people uh, mock him all the time. Even people went there to shit, you know, shit as a ship. You know? Huh? He is still hang on. He knows. He believes in Allah. He hang on and continue building it. And then when the flood come, then they saw the truth. But because he trusted Allah hundred percent, he was not <laughs> persuaded or dissuaded from completing the ship. Huh? He he believed that he must because he trusted in Allah, and he and his followers who trusted Allah. Safe. So whatever happened, hang on to him. The best planner, the most wise, the most known. Not, nobody else can outsmart him. He's the only one God, the most wise, the most known. Hang on to him, whatever. Now you see Job, Jacob, Noah, hang on to him. You will survive. And that is Islam. If you desire to reach this station, accept Islam and then submit forthwith to his predestination. The predestination is the best for you. If you don't accept that, Allah will never help you. That's why I say, Allah said that he will never help a, a person unless he help himself. This means that you don't accept his predestination. That means you don't think it's the best plan. You don't think his plan is good. Okay, so he will not help you. Okay? Uh, it's not that you must oh, uh, you must uh, work, then Allah will make you successful. No. You don't accept his predestination. He will not help you. Because predestination is a plan which is best for you. You rejected it, so be it. Okay? Say, Allah suffice for me. There's no God save him. In him I put my trust, and it's a lot of the tremendous throne. Okay, so hang on to it. So <clears throat> I hope I've passed a very good message to you all. Hang on to what I've said. I have to stop here.
because my leg is still uh, cannot too long. It's tinkling. I have to put my right leg up so that it will be normal again. Okay. So I have to stop here. I can't bring you to Zikr Allah. But when the time is come, I will. Next week, I'll be in Samarang. I'll have my class conducted from Samarang. Uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll be there. Tomorrow. So uh, I'll be doing a thing from there. Okay. Well, uh, pray for my house to be recovered uh, 100%. I went to the general hospital uh, Friday, Friday, and the surgeon was happy with the healing of my leg. Okay, uh, there was slight uh, part that still not yet would heal, and the place that they graft, they took the skin to graft still. Not hundred percent healed, but that small part and this and this uh, part that they graft they took for grafting, that one are uh, okay like they say. The, 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 the part they took for grafting is now healing well, and the small part that's still uh, not healing, they say maybe in a week, that one can be. Healed. So inshallah, I do ask for me that everything okay, and uh, I can continue. Da'wah, which you are. So, Abila Taufik Walidaya, Assalamualaikum. I go back to to Albert.